Are you ready to become awesomer? Hello, everyone. My name is Umar Hamid. I'm your host on the No Limit Selling Podcast, where industry leaders share their tips, strategy, and advice on how you can become better, stronger, faster. Just before we get started, I've got a question for you. Do you have a negative voice inside your head? We all do, right? I'm going to help you remove that voice in under 30 days guaranteed. Not only remove it, but transform it. So instead of the voice that sabotages you, there's one that propels you to much higher levels of performance and success. There's a link in the show notes. Click on it to find out more. All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the No Limit Selling Podcast. Today, we have John Goodell here with us today. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Umar. It's a pleasure to be here. So you're in uh, Manhattan and you uh, look after upstate New York is kind of your uh, domain? I'm more, well, we're really focused in Manhattan. I just, I have a house up in upstate. That oh, okay, I'm, great. You know, that's where, uh, that's the center of the universe pretty much. Yes. <laughs> so I noticed you've got a guitar in the background there. Uh, so you're a musician? I, I, I try to be, I try to be. And you're trying to be a realtor. So uh, how do the two things, I uh, know you're successful at it, but how do the two things kind of connect, do you think? Because there's something about, I was listening to this great, a jazz great, and he was like uh, 89 million years old. He was being interviewed by, you know, probably somebody in his 20s uh, on this radio program. The 20-year-old says, I said, you know, I've been doing this for a while, so you probably don't have to, you know, practice or rehearse anymore. He says, son, that's my favorite four hours of the day. <laughs> is doing that. So it's something about learning riffs and going along and creating harmony. How does that relate to being a realtor and dealing with clients and agents? Well, I think it music relates a lot because you it, it allows you to hit a different part of your brain because you have to be creative and you have to work um, at being, at least I do, I have to work at being, you know, playing guitar and, uh, and singing and and um, just improving myself. So it, it's definitely out, it's always been outside my comfort zone. That's something I was naturally good at. Um, and I just enjoy it. And so it's a, a nice hobby for me uh, in, in the background. Yeah, in, in whatever craft we do, whether we're uh, keynote speaking or playing music or being a realtor or negotiating, just getting good at the craft is so important. And the only way to do that is a practice and two, just always learning uh, one of my friends, I was staying with him uh, and his wife and for like a month and he would practice every day. He was a professional musician. And even my untrained ear could tell the difference between, you know, the start of the month and by the end of the month, he, he got better. And it was like, wow, that became a defining moment for me is whatever craft I pick, I need to really be devoted to it and try and be the best I possibly can. And that comes from learning and practice and uh, failing and succeeding. A hundred percent. And you, you have to be willing to fail, I think, in order to succeed in whatever you do. Because, uh, um, you know, the first running back who was, you know, star running back was not the star when they first got on the football field. And so you, you just have to be willing to go outside your comfort zone and be willing to put the work in. Um, There's a great quote by Vince Lombardi he says that uh, perfect practice makes perfect. So not just practice because you can practice the wrong thing over and over again. <laughs> and, but if you're practicing the right thing, you should be improving every time. Um, Absolutely. So fail forward. Something on the news feed came over today. It was Tom Brady became the most sacked quarterback in the history of the game. And that just comes from longevity and just doing it so mm -hmm. well for so long that that's just going to happen. So failing is part of success. Yes, it has to be. Because you've never, if you haven't done something before, you have to expect that you're going to do it wrong in order to do it right. And it, uh, a lot of people don't want to do it wrong. So they don't take that step out, yeah. outside. And that's in, in order to improve, in order to become that best version of you, you have to be willing to, um, to fail. It takes courage to do that. Yeah. And so one of the things I uh, tell people is, John, you have the God-given right to suck. And <laughs> what I mean by that is, like, if you did something new that you don't normally do, so let's say it was... Uh, you had to plead uh, in court. You're not a lawyer, but you had to like give it a shot. Like uh, tomorrow, you're going to mm -hmm. dig into the books. And even though you'll suck, you'll do a pretty decent job, probably better than some of the lawyers out there. And so we're so scared of failing that so many agents basically, oh, I can't do that till I'm perfect. And perfect is the enemy of, you know. Success. There is no perfect. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, um, it, it's, uh, it should be taken out of the, the dictionary. It's just you, you can never truly attain perfection. Even the, you know, I was uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, Michael Jordan. He was always he he always had a coach, you know, and he was even at the top of his game. Um, you know, it's just 
you see people who are super successful and they have people around them pushing them to be better. Uh, and they're constantly pushing themselves to be better. And I think a lot of times we look uh, at our neighbor or a coworker and say, oh, they're doing well. They're, they can do that, but I can't. You yeah. can do it too. You just have to figure out, you have to work against yourself, not, not against them. Uh, they started where they were. You need to start where you are and just keep improving yourself. Absolutely. I think a good phrase there is I'll never be able to do real estate as good as John and I'll do pretty good anyway. Like I may not be, you know, if I'm going up against Michael Jordan, there's never ever a scenario where I win, but being on the court with him would be like so fabulous. I'd, certainly I'd yeah. spend a lot of six months of deep training, not to so do that. I would, I would and I think the second part of that, the first one is, you know, you have the God given right to suck. So just go do. And the second part of that for me is very much uh, that what did I learn from this experience and how do I get better? Whether it turned out well mm -hmm. or it turned out horribly, what did I learn from it? How can I improve? And there's always a way. And if you don't have a way, uh, we come down to the third thing, which is get a mentor. Hey, John, I was doing this deal. It was going great. It just went sideways. And you, you asked me a few questions. Oh, okay. This is where you went wrong. Here's how you need to do better. So having a mentor is critical. So other than the team you lead, are you a mentor for anyone else? Yeah, I, I, I'm a huge fan of the mentor relationship, um, and I definitely try to uh, I try to do what I mentor people in my company, um, and, it, and it you know brings me a lot of joy. But I also have mentors who have mentored me, and um, and continue to because if you whatever you want to do, someone most likely has done it and probably been through a lot of the similar situations, um, so you can you can reach out to them and, and work with them, and then you can give back yourself. Um, and it, and it sort of the uh, circle. helps you succeed while you're helping other people succeed. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great circle. Uh, you have to give to get. Truly Absolutely. Really. And I think it's, uh, some people think that, you know, I'll be bothering the person if I ask them to mentor me. And it's like, no, people are dying to be uh, a mentor and want help because people yes. help them on their journey. There's nobody out there that says, you know, I did it all on my own without any help. You do th anything that was really accomplished uh, was done with a team and, and you have to be cognizant. Uh, of, uh, of that you need to work together with a team and you need help uh, in order to truly do the things that you want in your life. And I, I'm a big believer of that. I'm all for you mentioning. Yeah, and asking for help is not a sign of weakness. And a lot of people hide the truth no, and they no. get so far into this uh, mess that it's hard to pull them out. It's, uh, you almost feel like getting the head and dunking them in further. Okay, I'll end it quickly. But getting a team where it's people, it's perfectly fine to ask for help, get the guidance you need, move on and move forward. Exactly. So, the process. yeah. So what was one of, uh, tell me about a time in your career where you needed advice from someone where something was going sideways and you reached out for help and you got like this advice that allowed you to learn and save the deal. I have a great mentor I've used. He's a behaviorist. I studied behavior in college. Um, his name's Ken Wagner. And um, he, uh, multiple times where I wanted to help improve things in my company and go to him uh, and his company and help to um he'd help me um, and he's just always very giving with his knowledge and expertise and it sh showed me to really do the same oh, brilliant what's kind of interesting is uh certainly in let's say life or sports i'll pick up a skill and i'll get good at it and after being good at it for a while all of a sudden i pick up more subtleties wait a minute this is why this is working and I can do it better. So there's always like plateaus of learning as you go. And as long as you realize you never reach the pinnacle, it allows you to be like uh, mm -hmm. always improving. Always improving. And, that, and that's the key, just to focus on improving yourself. Uh, and the more you get it in as part of your habits, anything that you want to work on, anything you're really struggling with um, is probably because you have a, a subconscious program that's against it, either that you learned young or you picked up along the way. And, so you got to work, you know, through habit uh, um, or other ways to reach that subconscious and change that program, so you can really, you know, do what you do what you want, and then it becomes effortless. When it's a habit, yeah. it's effortless. You know, when we learn how to ride a bike, when we learn how to drive, we brush our teeth. It's effortless. You don't think putting, getting dressed and putting on your your shoes or your or your shirt is a, is a habit, but it is. If you see, you know, if you, um, my my kids are young. You, Sometimes you got to help, you know, help them put their shoes on, help them put, you know, get, get changed. It's just part of it because it's a habit for us. Um, but for them, they're still, they still have to work through it. So it's a, um, it, it's, you know, the more, the more you make things in your life that you want to do a habit, the, you know, the better you, you'll be because it will be effortless and you want to think about it. Brilliant. So uh, you've got a team. So how many people in your team? We have about 80 people. Nice. 
I think, in the, in the company. Brilliant. Plus and it's you and a partner? Myself and And who's your partner? Sarah Salzberg. Um, she's a uh, very successful playwright and producer. She's been on Broadway. And so she brings that sort of artistic ah, I love vibe. That. Um, in the company uh, with Bohemia. Come on, darlings, uh, let's Bohemia. sell some real estate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, and she's got great vision. It's a real, uh, very, you know, lucky to to meet her. Actually, she rented me my apartment when I first moved to the city, and that's how I got into. Oh, real estate love that. And how how um, we just developed, a, you know, a great working relationship. So there's uh, eighty people, and you guys are trying to figure out what's going on. So what I wanted to do was you and I, well, mostly you, because you're the smart one. Let's make this industry better this year. And so I wanted to, you to kind of think about what are the five challenges facing real estate agents right here? It's going to be November 2022. You know, interest rates, stuff's going on. So what are the five biggest challenges right now? Mm-hmm. Let's uh, take them one by one. One one first comes to mind. Sure. Yeah, um, I, that's a great question. Uh, more first, I, I would say the, uh, it, you know, inter- you said interest rates, right? So... I think a lot of people are, um, you know, concerned with how, how that will affect uh, the market. And it's, are you, um, for our clients, it's, there's always someone looking to buy and there's always someone looking to sell. And so a, a lot of times sales, uh, people can get in their heads about what is, um, that the market's going to go down. And so they don't actually try to find the people who are willing to sell right now for regardless of the interest rate or looking to right. buy. And I think that's a, a big part of it is to focus on what you can control and you can't control the interest rates. So focus on what you can control. Who There are buyers out there. There are sellers out there. Um, and what you and one of the things that. just to add to that is it's like uh, we're all guilty of it at some point in our lives where we map our thinking onto our clients. Oh, they want to won't want to pay that much. There's this interesting uh, test. If you ask someone, you know, do you think five hundred dollars is a lot of money? And for a lot of salespeople, uh, it would be, yeah, I think $500 is a lot of money. And then it shows you their relationship with money. And other people are like, oh, yeah. even if they don't have $500, they're like, no, that's not a lot of money at all. And I think, uh, so don't map over your thinking on what people can afford or whether they're going to buy in this market or not. Just figure out what they want. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. Uh, another mentor uh, of mine is uh, Bob Proctor. I got to be mentored with him before he, he passed. Um, and he, he would always say, uh, nothing is big or small, except you're thinking, nice. you know, so, you know, for some people, 500, is big. <laughs> some people, it's small, some people, 500,000 is big and for some people, it's yeah. small. And so it, it, you know, it's really, uh, our thing where it comes down to our thinking. So I remember this interview with, uh, Mark Wahlberg talking about when he was like, uh, Marky Marks, the rapper. And he said, you know, he'd get a big fat check from the uh, record label. Him and his posse would go out and buy a Ferrari. But they didn't have any money for insurance. <laughs> they spent it all. Yeah. And he always said, you know, I didn't care because I knew more money was coming in. Like there was never end to the supply of money. And that was his mindset. And sure enough, more money came in. They got the insurance, bought a house. And then, of course, he became a movie star and is super worldwide famous now. So the first challenge we identified was for real estate agents was the interest rates. What's challenge number two? Mm-hmm. Challenge number two would be uh, maybe regulations, at least where I am, uh, regulatory changes, um, just with uh, in New York with the laws and and how they affect, uh, you know. So, give me industry. an example of one of those uh, uh, changes. Uh, one of the changes uh, I would say with just in my industry is uh, there was a rent law changes a few years ago in 2019, um, and COVID sort of exacerbated the uh, effects of them um and that uh it just changed the market so in new york there's just a lot uh it doesn't make sense for owners to put uh inventory in the market so you have about sixty thousand or you know growing list of um what we call purgatory units so units Mm. are just off the market um and and can't be rented um because oh it doesn't make sense for the owner uh to financially put the funds in to make to upgrade it um, which you'd have to do by law for a lot of the units. And um, so therefore, they just keep them off the market. That then squeezes the market so there's less supply. Oh, yeah. Um, and again, COVID's just sort of exacerbated it. I don't think anybody thought that was going to happen after they got What's the crazy is I've heard of, you know, bidding uh, wars for buying houses, and I'd never heard of bidding wars for rental units. And I'm talking to another realtor in the market. Yes. was like, oh, yeah. And it was like, you know, I'll pay 5000 a month, 5500 It's like, what? Yeah. It's yeah. good to be a landlord. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. 
Yeah, it's right now. But I would say just um, a lot of owners would just prefer to uh, be able to release their their units um, for the prices that they think uh, you know are reasonable in the market. Nice. So yes, it's the, it to push the prices up, um, but they also have a lot of units that they can't rent, so it's uh, uh, they prefer to rent everything at a more reasonable reasonable price. Most owners are um, really want to provide oh, a good brilliant. service. Um, so what's the third uh, challenge facing uh, real estate agents? Third challenge facing real estate agents, I'd say, is mindset. Um, this, uh, I, I think that's just a you know, consistent, consistent challenge, uh, sort of coming back to the you know, controlling what you, you can control, but also knowing that you're your worst right. enemy and you're your you're, you're, uh, hero. Right. Um, so, uh, you can, you're the one who can, is, is stopping you from getting wherever you want. When we, when we start blaming everybody around us, we're not really taking responsibility for what we can do. Um, and then we can't actually move forward. That's the real problem. Um, once you take responsibility and say, okay, it's, it's on me. And that's a tough thing to do no more, oh, yeah. for everyone. Um, but once you take responsibility, then you say, okay, wait, well now I can change it. That gives you power. Uh, and that, and now you can actually uh, do the things that you need to do. Um, not that they're easy, but no one who's successful uh, didn't work at things. You know, things that weren't easy. So I'd say mindset is a huge uh, brilliant. Huge and just to add to that is what's interesting about mindset is once you have the mindset, you're looking to validate it. And so if it's like uh, this never works out for me then you start looking for failure opportunities and validating your belief. And if you're like, uh, it always works out, then uh, buyers come out of the woodwork. It's like, I wasn't even looking at it. I met somebody on the subway. And so, yeah. So what is number four? That, um, I just want to add to that number three, what you just said, because it just hit me on something oh. that I wanted to share. It's, we have something that's called a recticular yes. activating system. I'm pointing the back of my head because it's at the, uh, I think it's at the top of your spine right before and it's sort of, um, it's like the bouncer for your brain. I, mm-hmm. I guess this is, you know, I'm sure there's better ways to describe it. Um, but it, the, I guess our senses pick up so much information that our brain can't handle it. Um, and so we have it, there, some information goes in, some doesn't. So when you give your brain a goal of what you want, uh, whether it's good or bad, like you just said, then you start noticing the good things. But if you're focused on what's bad, you're not going to see the good things. So I just wanted to add to that. Um, I'd say the, the fourth challenge is just you, you got to sometimes just do the work. Um, you know, you got to you got to do go back to the basics. I find um, and just focus on the basics. The really successful agents still um, learn their inventory. They you know we call it previewing in my in my company where they they just they, they go out on a regular basis and they and they learn the inventory and it's subconscious. They don't even think about it. And the agents who struggle, I noticed they do things inconsistently. Um, they, they sometimes preview and then, and then they stop and then they pre- preview again. And I, I'd recommend to really, um, you know, get back to the basics and what, and what makes the job successful. Part of that's learning. A right. common theme, we've been interviewing a lot of really successful realtors in the business. And one of the things they say is you got to work it. Nothing happens magically. you got to keep on working it and just get better at what you're doing. And quoting them it's like some people think it's like oh flexibility i can work whenever i want and it's like yeah if you want to starve do that but if you want to work and build a business work it so what is a numero five the fifth challenge that real estates in 2022 are facing 2022 the fifth challenge i'd say they're facing um would really for me would be to um sort of have belief and self-confidence and what and what they uh what they can do um, cause you can really do anything, uh, if you just, you know, focus on yourself and focus on improving yourself. So I'd say just have belief that you can accomplish anything and, and then do the, you know, do the work and back it up with actions, um, to sort of visualize what you visualize, what you want, believe you can achieve it. Um, and then back it up with the actual action. So you can't just sit on your couch and wait for your wealth to come or work a few days a week, like you just said, but you have to sort of believe that you can, what you can achieve. And oh, love happen. that. Back it up so that. just kind of getting you to just a uh, speed round, you've got 80 people in your company, uh, most of them realtors. So what are the challenges they're telling you? What are they struggling with? Like, uh, what are the common things that they come to you for? The common things I hear are usually this, 
um, issues that they can't, they feel they can't control things that happen in the marketplace, or maybe a, a deal died for um, this, this issue or deal died for that issue. Um, and it, to me, a lot of it comes back to uh, just focusing on what you can control and what you can't and focusing on the, um, the mindset uh, of that. I can achieve the goal that I had out to. So a lot of times when you believe you can achieve stuff, something and you stay committed and commit, commitment's right. huge, right? Because if you're committed to something and something bad ha happens, actually something bad will happen, right? And <laughs> whatever we work towards. So if you're committed to it, when you hit that obstacle, you figure, you immediately think, how do I overcome mm. it? You know, how do I get through this? When you're not committed to something, you don't, uh, you know, your immediately thought is, how do I get out of this? <laughs> so it's, um, commitment just plays a huge role, I think, in oh, absolutely. Uh, moving forward. And, and uh, you know, so I, I see that happen where they're, they want this goal, but they're not really committed to giving everything. And sometimes we're just off on the time, I think, when we get a goal, I want to hit this by this amount of time. If you give it your all and you get there and that self-reflection at the end of the day, and you say, you know what, I gave it my all. I'll hit it next year and I'm going to do even better. Uh, I, th I think that's, that's fine. A lot of times we look and say, did I really give it my all? You know, did I do everything I could? And that's the self-reflection that Absolutely. you should do daily. Because a lot of agents day. don't do that because they don't want to look at the bad. It's like, oh, it was a bad buyer. It was a bad situation. I was awesome. Let's move on. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't me. Three <laughs> last questions. Number one, what brings you joy in your work? Uh, helping people. Nice. Yeah, you know, helping helping people, helping um, you know, helping my agents, helping my, my staff, you know, helping to find you know, serve customers. I think we get paid for the service that we provide at the end of the day, and if we provide more value, we get paid more money. Um, Jeff Bezos provides a lot of value. <laughs> so Absolutely, yeah, a lot of money. I can click right now, and order whatever I want. <laughs> you know, so that's pretty. So, cool question number two: uh, What's one mind hack, one technique you use uh, that would be useful for team leaders, agents to just perform better, be happier? Uh, gratitude, I think, is an Huge. important process. Just sort of um, either gratitude list in the morning or the evening, or even just writing one thing that you're grateful for in the evening. And then looking. At I'll just add one thing to that. Um, uh, so I'll like, ask you, yeah, uh, John, uh, you know, you're grateful for your kids, obviously. So let me ask the because. Mm -hmm. uh, if you said, I'm grateful for my kids because, what's the because? I'm grateful for my kids because um, they just provide me so much joy um, uh, on a, you know, just on yeah. a regular basis. That, you know, even when they're, when they're sick or when they uh, don't go to bed on time or <laughs> get up out of bed. And, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, they just provide me so much joy. And so and just to so add to that, so what I would do yeah. is, dear listeners and viewers, is go, you know, uh, that thing of gratitude that John mentioned is add a because to it. And then I'm going to ask you one more follow up on that. John, can you think of a time, let me yesterday, one moment of joy you had with your kids and just go back there just for a moment. Uh, so gratitude yesterday, um, just, you know, just putting them to bed, just reading them, uh, yeah. reading them stories. I just, uh, I love uh, story time. I probably, I probably read too. And too if you long. went back there, you'd get the warmth of that moment and the bond and the love would just yeah. come in. And just I think that's it. what moves human beings is. So it's not just the gratitude. Mm -hmm. Think of the because, and then go back to a moment where you felt it. And that supercharges your yes, whole being to, oh my God, I'm so blessed. And I want more of that. Yeah, it's not just writing the list down. It's really look, writing it, looking at it, and getting oh, brilliant. it. Brilliant. Love that. I think that's a great point. Here's the last question. Is there a question I should have asked you that I did not? <laughs> um, I'd say uh, just, just you know, one a, a key takeaway for me um, that, I, that I'd want to say is just that you can accomplish anything you want in life if you focus on improving yourself and um, becoming that better version of you. And uh, anything, I, it's a hobby of mine to study or passion really to study successful people and uh, people who have studied successful people. And it's all about raising your standard, changing who you are, um, changing your self image, um, and just becoming that uh, the best version of you. And that it's easy to say, it's different to think, oh, I actually have to become a different person. You're actually going to change your, to get to the goal that you really want, that's super high goal you have to become really a different you you have to change your person yeah and a better version of yourself and not just like uh, i'm going to turn into this hey how are you i'm a totally different person it's like no it's like a better version of yourself and the fear so the yeah. path to greatness i think is yeah. this knowing who you are stepping into your authentic mm -hmm. self and 
removing the fears that stop you from fully illuminating your being. You do those things and you got the right yes, intent 100%. is not to dominate the world and kill people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. Usually not because when you, the truly successful people, you notice they, they, they really want to, yeah. uh, you know, most of them because uh, they, because they've hit everything, I've done everything. So now the only thing left to do is to give, give out, give my knowledge, look at people like Bill Gates, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, give my knowledge, give my money, you know, um, and just, it's, uh, that's what's, uh, I think, true success. Ah, brilliant. John, thank you so much for being on the program today. It was uh, a very enjoyable conversation, and I'm looking forward to our next. Oh, me too. Thank brilliant. you so much. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating. And if you're looking for more tools, go to my website at nolimitselling.com. I've got a free mind training course there that's going to teach you some insights from the world of neuro-linguistic programming, and that is the fastest way to get better results.